we're in yeah. progress. All right. Yes. Oh, yeah, yeah. Here we go. Well, welcome nice. to our first revived ATD Technology Special Interest Group. Thanks for joining us. I am the co-host, John Morley. I've been an instructional designer for several decades now, uh, the previous five years with Genentech using Storyline. I'm now an independent consultant, and if I can be of help to you on a project, my email address and LinkedIn are in the chat window. Anyway, I just mentioned Kevin, my co-host. He'll be doing the presentation this evening. Uh, he's uh, Kevin Jorgensen. He is a really busy guy. His day job at uh, General Dynamics, uh, is this pronounced NASCO, Kevin? Yeah, NASCO. Nesco, he is supporting training for all of their business units. Plus, he also teaches a class at San Diego State University for the Learning, Design, and Technology Department. Just what we're talking about tonight. What a coincidence. Uh -huh. uh, Kevin honed his craft at the, in the competitive crucible of entertainment television as a producer with the Hollywood Reporter TV. Hollywood Reporter TV. There we go. No one knows it all, especially Kevin and me. So this is intended to be a discussion rather than a lecture. Questions and even challenges are welcome. Uh, you may have better ideas or just want to go deeper at some point. So please speak up. Uh, rather than a sage on the stage, we intend to be a guide on the side as we all learn more. Kevin's presentation will be on using uh, PowerPoint to storyboard a lesson and create a final WBT. So now we're going to go around the group asking you for your name, where you're joining from, your job title, and for a job title, student is a perfectly honorable job title, uh, then what you would like to get out of tonight's presentation. Karen, could we start with uh, you? Unmute. There we go. Hi, Karen. I'm up in Los Angeles and delighted to be here. I'm so glad you guys are uh, hosting this. Um, I'm an independent consultant. I do primarily I do a lot of OD work and I speak Spanish. But for 20 years, I was in training and design and um, PowerPoint. And I just decided to not make the transition to e-learning uh, designer because I don't I feel like that's take some it's more like programmer background, I think. Um, so, but I I'm so good at like case studies and activities and timing. I mean, I, I've developed over 50 courses on PowerPoint. So what I guess my main thing I want to get out of this is, well, I'm just happy with all of it. I just want to see, you know, you said a template and how a, a e-learning designer would work with just an instructional designer. Um, but also I'm good at case studies, activities, uh, would that be something uh, an e-learning designer would be interested? Um, I also don't know if there's really much availability for work designing storyboards, for PowerPoint, if I'm not an e-learning specialist. I think it would take a larger company with bigger budget to do that. So um, it, both, you know, do you think there's opportunities and also um, just whatever you have to offer for a PowerPoint person? Okay, uh, Kevin, do you want to address that right now? Uh, typically, a storyboard is part of a larger project. It's not something right. a uh, individual do uh -huh. as a specific member of that team. Yeah, uh, storyboards are uh, have a variety of uses depending on the organization you're with, the, um, uh, the 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 team that you're working with. I mean, you could use the story, you can use the functionality of a storyboard as an individual designer and developer, or if you're working with uh, stakeholders, it provides an excellent resource to review your material uh, or what's the, what's the plan of development, keep them in the loop with the subject matter experts, as well as a team. If you are if you have a, a group of anal uh, instructional analysts and designers, but then you outsource the development work to another company or another individual, another department, the storyboard is really your blueprint for creating your final product. And so that would be how you communicate that over to that team. But for just keeping your say, yourself on track and get, developing your, your vision of where this e-learning is, is going to go, uh, creating your activities, creating your, um, your, your case studies, whatever it might be, you can do that in a storyboard. Uh, uh, and not just for e-learning, for just about any type of instructional material. In fact, 
I really, uh, storyboards were uh, first re used in the film industry. And that's where I got my um, experience using storyboards is working in television and film is developing out storyboards for our video projects. And in fact, I'm going to be providing an example at the beginning after we get through our introductions on how a storyboard was used to create an instructional video. So uh, yeah, it has a lot of application and um, for, for just about any size organization or any instructional designer, e-learning developer of any caliber, um, it's, it's a really helpful tool. I Thank always so stress, much. I always stress it's never cheaper or easier to change things than it is in the storyboard. So let's <laughs> get it right Good on one. paper. Uh, Bridget, would you like to uh, introduce yourself and uh, let's uh, hear what you would like to get out of this See, we need to unmute you. Yeah. Um, thank you so much. So I'm Bridget, and I'm a learning consultant with Skillsoft. And I am here today because I've been on kind of two spectrums, one where I just sort of create everything from the ground up, and I just do it all myself, however it's going to work. And I've also been a part of really big teams where there's a whole content design team. And so it's like trying to have, you need to have that map and have that shared communication and language. So yeah, I would just love the tips and tricks that you guys have to share out. Because also I find that, you know, in some situations you are limited to PowerPoint and others, you know, that you other situations where you need to be really schooled in Captivate or Camtasia or something else. And so it's um, that limitation is if you haven't had the opportunity to engage with those platforms before. Yeah. I, I like I'd like to point something out, um, even, even though there is a common conception that PowerPoint is a limited tool, we're going to expand that limitation beyond what people believe are possible. Uh, there is an amazing amount of things you can do in PowerPoint that is beyond the standard presentation. Uh, it is really, I've seen people make video games and movies in PowerPoint with animations. It's, it's amazing its capabilities, and we're going to open up some of those tonight. Yeah, a lot more than an hour's worth. Okay, how about the other Kevin? Kevin M., could you please uh, say hello? Yeah, hi, good evening. Thanks for offering this. Happy to be here. I'm Kevin. I've worked in training and development about 15 years. I work for a local tech company. I'm doing a lot of training and program management. Um, in my career, I've probably been asked for a storyboard once, and the, the manager was shocked that I didn't have one. Uh, the other 14 years, uh, sad to say, I have all these beautiful instructional design books on my shelf, and most of the time it's just, hey, give me a slide deck. And so what am I looking for? Um, just some design tips for those of us who sometimes day to day are just, you know, diving in and starting to build before we really think process and, and needs. It, it gets so easy to do that. Um, design tips, some thoughts on what is the storyboard and how you use it. And maybe in particular, like, when do you make that jump? from this is the storyboard to this is the real thing, particularly if you're gonna upload into something like Storyline and maybe you can't export back. Like when, when do you cross that line of, okay, I wasn't just playing around here, but now I'm giving you the real thing and tips for when and how you present that to somebody, when do you get sign off and move to the real thing? Like, do you give them 50 pieces of pictures and clip art and let they pick, or you're not even that specific when you, you're kind of designing things. So tips and tricks that you've learned is fine and if i can add that to my toolkit i'll be good go on client approval and get it in writing <laughs> yeah <laughs> sign off sign off uh you know to, to, to mention uh to, to um talk a little bit about what kevin had uh, uh asked about um storyboards can also be used as a sidecar file to your e-learning to kind of track it and verify and, and use for updating often. So let's say you are going to do what you've designed out your e-learning and you're going to do an update on it. Well, a storyboard is a great place to play around with it in a, in a, um, a low, um, low cost way to figure out if you can make changes, get sign offs and, uh, from stakeholders, uh, and update the information without actually diving deep into the developmental cycle or development of your e-learning. So it makes it a little easier to, to and it's a record of the training. Um, so in case your training is ever audited at, uh, at General Dynamics NASCO, we deal with a lot of training audits, especially when it comes to safety. Um, there are negligent training uh, negligent training claims for somebody gets injured. We got to verify that the material was taught correctly. And a storyboard is a great way to document the training that was provided and, and give it to the stakeholders or other interested individuals to verify what was trained. So you just keep it up to date as a sidecar to your e-learning. Yeah, yes. Thanks, Kevin. And uh, Sarah, 
good evening. Could you please uh, introduce yourself and what would you like to get out of this tonight? All right. Hi, my name is Sarah. I um, currently develop training for a company called Rise Smart. Um, it's a career transition company, but my history is really in industrial training, nuclear power plants and solar turbines. Um, so now I'm moving into the more touchy feely, more vague kind of stuff. So it's very different for me instead of like set points and everything. Now it's like work life. And I'm like, oh, okay, so um, so a couple reasons, a couple things I want to get out of this one, my college professor is presenting. So I figured I should show up and, <laughs> um, and our next assignment is in fact a storyboard, which I have less mm -hmm. than no experience in. So I was like, hey, I'll just get right in there. Um, so what I'm other than that, what I'm trying to get out of this is um, I have been just build, I use articulate rise most of the time and then throw in some storyline stuff just to jazz it up. But um, mostly I've just started building my training and then having, you know, my people come in and review it. I think that they are hesitant to make any big changes because it looks final already. Even though I have said, get after it. I know you're not going to hurt my feelings. Like, go ahead. I think they're very hesitant to, to chop away at it because it looks like I put so much work into it, but Articulate Rise is not actually that much work. Don't tell anyone. Um, so I would like, I think that they would feel more comfortable get, getting in there and moving things around if it's more of a storyboard level. Um, so that's, that's kind of what I'm trying to do is see if that works better for them. Plus, I don't know what they do. There's so many different groups that I, that I develop training for that I need their wording and so I'm, I'm hoping that I can just put spots where I'm like, put your words here, put your screenshots here, because it's hard for me to be like, I need all this information without feeling like I'm saying do my job for me, even though that's not what I'm doing. Um, I'm hoping that if there are specific spots, I can, it seems more like filling your information than saying, give me everything so that I can make it pretty for you. So that's what I'm hoping. Okay, thank you, Sarah. We'll see if we can uh, take care of some of that. Okay, uh, well, Makiko, I remember meeting you back at the uh, uh, the uh, January meeting. So uh, please introduce yourself and how may we help you? Hi, I'm Makiko Corset. Nice to meet you again. Like I, I've seen Bridget and John and uh, Kevin and Sarah at class. So actually, like I started, uh, like my name is Makiko Corset, and I work for uh, Kiyosera. Uh, which is a Japanese like a manufacturing company. Like, and I'm in the semiconductor division, uh, like in a quality department. Then uh, I've been developing uh, like a, mainly like a engineering training uh, recently. So then, you know, um, that's a first like online program, you know, comp company that like, uh, implement in, in San Diego. So like, it's a very hot topic that I'm still learning. But um, very like a, a management is like you know, have a good high expectation you know our, our my like our products. So um, yes, like as John you know just mentioned you know I uh, started uh, I become an ATD member from last year. So you know I try to like you know, uh, attend the, you know any events as much as possible. Um, then yeah, like, January I met John and actually the like, Kevin uh, introduced you know his class then um, from. Last month, I started uh, taking the class as an observer. So then I decided to um, like, uh, apply the master's degree at SDSU. <laughs> so I'm doing the email application and then, like, and I, I just finished uh, writing the, um, the statement on purpose that I'm so excited. Hopefully I can get in. <laughs> 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 then uh, what I learned is this like, PowerPoint I normally use, you know, like a daily basis. Then my like, online training is based on um, the, uh, using the PowerPoint. But still, like I'm taking Kevin's class, and actually, like we are, I have assignment to you know, do on by Sunday, so it's a short board. And so I, I, I can still have chance to do it by my assignment. So, you, <laughs> so your current assignment is a storyboard. Correct. Hey. <laughs> so I mean, I'm gonna do aim right to place. class. You know? <laughs> <laughs> okay, you I, I, I planned that. Okay, thank you, Mikiko. Uh, mm -hmm. Help me with this next name. Is it uh, uh, TB or Timmy or, or something else? <clears throat> Gleason. Hi, it's Timmy. Timmy, okay. Hi, Timmy. I have, Timmy. La I have thank, laryngitis thank and a, a pretty oh. bad cold, so I'm oh. I'm being incognita. I apologize. I know you like to see faces. 
quite all right. <clears throat> and I love storyboarding. Um, I'm artistic and I uh, have always wanted to know more about it. So I'm very interested. Okay, okay. Well, uh, with that, let's uh, turn it over to uh, Kevin. It's uh, all yours. Please enlighten us. Yes, yes, absolutely. So I just put into the chat a link to the workshop files that we're going to be using for uh, this evening. Uh, so you can download them there. Uh, I will also provide a link uh, to let me get the link right now. Uh, this uh, now in those workshop files, you're going to find a uh, e-learning info document um, that is going to have some of the content that we're going to be using to add to our our um, to the information for our storyboard. But I'm also going to provide that same document as a Google uh sheet so we if you wanted to follow along there we can all collaborate in that document you can see exactly where i'm copying and pasting information from so there's some resources for you uh there will be an e-learning um storyboard template in those documents that you'll be that you're welcome to use uh and take with you and and uh, uh use for your future uh future development um so that's a it's an artifact of this of this workshop for you as well as some graphics but that's going to be for the exercise we're going to do Storyboard is really a design and developmental tool for um, just about any kind of instructional content that you may create. Uh, we're going to be focused on e-learning today for the most part, but I will show you how a storyboard, an example of a storyboard and how it turned into an instructional video. Um, and uh, But yeah, storyboards are typically used as a, as a in between the analysis and design and development uh, phases of, of, uh, of Addy. Um, so you've already analyzed the content. You kind of know what your learning objectives objectives are, you know what uh, the topics that you're going to be covering. So you've already done that initial analysis. And then now you're going to, to, to design, uh, you might have already done some, some content mapping, uh, and, uh, and, you know, outline which topics are coming first, second, or whatever order you're, you're uh, presenting the information. And now the storyboard is to make that blueprint, you know, we can't make a house without blueprints. Um, in the shipbuilding industry, that's NASCO, National Steel and Shipbuilding Company, we can't build a ship without blueprints. Blueprints, and we can't design instruction without blueprints either, especially if it's a larger, more complex with a large team of people. So that's really what the storyboard is for. It's a blueprint for the creation of an instructional intervention. So let's take a look real quick. I'm going to share my screen. Uh, all right, and the screen right here. Uh, share my screen on uh, the use of a storyboard and how it. Uh, oh, let me make sure I share the audio too. Uh, share sound. Okay, so this is an example of, of a storyboard um, uh, that we created, that I created for a project uh, several years ago as an explanatory video. Hope everybody can see the screen. Any thumbs up or head shakes? Yes. Okay, great. So uh, this is an explanatory video about augmented reality gamification. And uh, on the, the right side here is the actual video. So I'm going to play the video and step through the storyboard and you're going to see how they kind of correspond. And there are some differences though. Nader is an avid magazine subscriber and loves looking at photos from different publications. He has always admired the compositions and colors of the, the amazing video? pictures. He yeah. wishes he could have that yeah. style and look for his own photographs. He has a nice camera on his phone, but isn't sure where to go from there. Have you ever wanted to try something new, but weren't the, sure where to get started? The voiceover is down here in the storyboard. Or maybe you've started, but you're not sure how to get better. You can always take a class or hire a private instructor, but that can be expensive and time consuming. There's a better, more effective way to learn new skills and have fun doing it, all on your own time. It's called Augmented Reality Gamification. Augmented reality technology enriches the real world with digital information and media, such as 3D models and video, overlaid in real time on your mobile digital device. Augmented reality is using your phone to put digital furniture into your home to see if that new couch will fit. It's holding your tablet up to a work of art and getting detailed information on the artist, style, and history or it's catching virtual creatures running around in a real, digitally augmented world. Gamification is the application of game-playing elements to non-gaming areas of activity. 
Gamification is checking into your favorite cafe to become recognized as the king of cappuccino. Or it's accruing virtual points for watching videos and increasing your knowledge on a certain subject. It's completing quests, vanquishing foes, and leveling up your life. Augmented reality, coupled with gamification, is changing the way we learn and attain skills, not tomorrow, but today. Let's say Nader downloads an augmented reality photo app to his smartphone and hits the streets. With his phone showing a heads-up display with guides, he can use the augmented reality to see exactly where he needs to point the camera to get the good shot. Then, when he snaps his picture, he can get points for using the rules of composition and exposure. Not only does Nader have a great picture to share, but he has leveled up his photographic knowledge as well. Augmented reality gamification can be used for virtually any aspect of life. Whether you are learning yoga stances, juggling, or creating a work of art. Augmented reality is an educational opportunity available to everyone and with gamification it is completely transforming the way we learn. Augmented reality gamification, the future of learning today. So that's, that's how a storyboard can uh, show or can can, dict can turn into the final product there. Uh, but as you noticed that there were some changes that happened. The, the storyboard wasn't perfect when it was designed. We were, when we got into production for the video, we realized some things just weren't going to work right. It wasn't going to flow correctly. And so we ended up having to change things a little bit here and there. And that is to be expected. That is absolutely to be expected. So your storyboard does not, is, is kind of just a, a draft version of your e-learning. You don't have to stick strictly to it. You can vary it quite a bit uh, depending on the needs of the production. Because uh, not every, you know, they say of all plans of mice and men, same sort of thing. You plan something out, it doesn't work out quite right. You got to be able to, to, to change a little bit. And that's A-OK. -okay. But the nice thing is the storyboard provided a good structure that we built off of. And uh, that's what we're going to do tonight with us, uh, with, with the, uh, the, the, the workshop files that we're going to be uh, that we're dealing with. Uh, now, I mentioned earlier about how storyboards are also important for being a documentation of whatever e-learning or whatever intervention, instructional intervention that you have published. And so um, after you have developed, fully developed your, um, your material, you could go back and redo the storyboard so that it completely matches what you actually did. And then that'll be kind of a log, a paper log of whatever you develop. That way, if somebody does need to add changes, like in a video, they could, instead of watching the video and saying, hey, at that one part where the transition from him holding the camera to it going to a picture of the flower, uh, need to make that change here, you don't have to have that kind of conversation. You can say, here's the storyboard, tell me exactly what you want to change or write it down and sign off on it. And that way I can have a ver uh, approval that this is the change that you wanted, we're all on the same page. So that's another use of storyboarding after the development is done, if you ever have to go back and do any kind of, um, any kind of uh, updates to the training. So what we're going to do is um, we're going to open up the uh, e-learning storyboard uh, file. Uh, it's a POTX. If you haven't downloaded already, please download it. If you uh, so you can follow along, but if you just want to watch and say okay, so it's e-learning storyboard version 1.0.0 POTX. Now this is a template PowerPoint presentation, um, and it is uh, which means that it, each time you open it, it opens a brand new presentation. So if I type some information in here. And then I uh, close it. It's going to ask me to save and name it. Um, and uh, and each time I do that, so I would save it. Say I saved it. I'm just, just going to cancel. Uh, don't save. I am not changing anything in this original file. It would make a new file each time. So that way, it kind of it keeps the integrity of that of that template uh, PowerPoint. So you can just keep on reusing and reusing and reusing. I know I've seen people that that uh, take the same PowerPoint PPTX and just copy it, and then you have all the old information. You have to kind of scrub it and everything. You don't have to do that here. Each time you open it, it's a brand new one. And um, in this template, this is pre-designed for you. Um, this first slide is course details. This is where we're going to put information about the course that we're creating. 
Um, and then there, it, this has already been um, uh, preset for all the slides you could need um, in here. So you can just open them up and, and add new slides. And this will be everything that you would need to create your, uh, your, uh, your, your storyboard. But we're going to focus just on this uh, course details first. I'm going to remove these just to get them out of the way for right now. Now, there's another document in that uh, if you're going to use the Google the Google Sheet, um, it is the um, the Chelsea Dining Collection e-learning info sheet. This is going to represent our analysis. Um, so instead of going into writing all of the dialogue and the learning objectives, I've kind of done that for us for this workshop. So we don't need to develop that. We can just copy and paste them in. And if you want to use uh, the link for the for the Google Sheet, you're more than welcome to, or you can open up your own document uh, version of this, the uh, the Word document in that uh, Dropbox link. So uh, let me do a screen split here. Oops, wrong side. Oops. Using multiple monitors here, so there we go. All right. So uh, in this course details, as mentioned, this is where we're going to put all the relevant information about what we're actually designing. Um, so this is so whenever when everybody opens up opens up or prints it up, it'll tell us exactly what the name of the of the course, the description, what is the main objective, who the audience is. And so we're going to fill that out based on the information that we were given in the info document. So the title of this is going to be Sales Enablement Training for the Chelsea Dining Collection. We're going to be developing an e-learning to uh, introduce this new dining collection of, um, of, of furniture for this uh, uh, for Devonshire Living. They're a home retail furnishing, a fictitious one. It's a home furnishing uh, company, so more to like a pottery barn, something like that. Uh, and so, yeah, they, they have a new collection of dining, a new dining table collection. This is how to introduce it to the sales associates and let them know what are the features and the benefits of it and how to sell it. And that's what we're gonna do for the description. That's right here. And that specifically says what this is. It's just, it's, this training will uh, acquaint you with the features and benefits of the Chelsea Dining Collection and, sh and show you how to best present it using the so that tie phrase. In the analysis of uh, the, this is their sales um, uh, method is they use the so that tie phrase to put a feature of the product to its benefit. And so that's what we're gonna train to people. Uh, we're not going to enter stakeholder uh, SME or team member information, but if you were working with stakeholders, SMEs, and team members, you would write their names in there so that they're all listed as this is who we need to contact. You want to get all that information in one place. The topic type, this is a sales enablement. Now, topic type is um, can be different depending on what your organization considers topics. Um, I personally consider a topic type being uh, familiar with the content performance matrix and in instructional design. The topics are either facts, concepts, procedures, processes, or principles. So if you wanted to use that instead, you certainly can. But for the sake of ease, for those that may not um, have a depth of knowledge in those, in those topic types, we'll just call this sales enablement for right now. Now the media, delivery media, this could be video, it could be a, uh, it could be a, a document of some type, but for our sake, we are doing e-learning. So we're gonna type in e-learning right here, and then we wanna add what is the uh, what elements of uh, media are gonna be in that e-learning. Is there, there might be video in e-learning. E-learning is kind of a package of material, so there could be video in it, but for our sake, there is not. There's just gonna be text, audio, and images. And then the target audience, as you say, see from here, is sales associates. So I'll just copy and paste that information over. Duration is just 30 minutes. I'll put that in there, 30 minutes. And our terminal learning objective is during a customer interaction, you will be able to use the so that tie phrase to, uh, to connect the features, the Chelsea collection features and benefits. Now, if you're using an LMS with search engine with that the people have to search for this training in, then you may have to have keywords. Um, so if you've already, if those keywords have already been uh, um, uh, identified, you put those in here, or you can just start writing your keywords in there. And that way, when people want to look for this course on your LMS, those are the keywords that they that would bring it up. So that's it. We've got our course details page pretty much done. Um, now we're going to move into the topics page. So I'm going to open up the topic structure slide. And this shows what each topic uh, about each topic that we're going to be covering in the e-learning. 
So if we're going to, uh, and, and normally I like to not bombard e-learn or anything with a lot of different topics. Four is really the max. Uh, I think even that might be a little too much. Um, you want to keep like two, three, um, but I put a, a topic structure to accept up to four topics. If it ends up that you're developing e-learning or any instructional intervention that has more than four topics, you would just make another page of this. So just add one down there. Boom, you got another one, another set of four. But uh, I find that four is typically enough. And in, a, in our um, information sheet, we already have those sections or topics already uh, listed. So the first one is going to be features and benefits. So we would write that information in here. Now, again, when you are developing out your, um, your e-learning and you're using your storyboard, it's kind of a brainstorming where you're actually writing these topics down in here. You certainly can. Um, but this information sheet is just expedited that process for the sake of this workshop. So the definition of features and benefits are features or attributes of a product. Benefits are the value the product provides to the customer. So we put that in the topic structure right here under, it, in, under that topic one. Now that will communicate to whoever our developer is, what is that topic about? You know, we're, we're, we, they have to know. They, they may not be able to tell what a feature and a benefit is, and they may even use that information for the development of the e-learning and the learning objective for that section, which is gonna be, you will be able to differentiate a product's features from its benefits. So we'll put that in there as well. And then you would go down the line and do the rest of them too. Like the section two or topic two is just about the Chelsea Dining Collection and is the newest collection from the Devonshire Living. Oops. There we go, I'll put that information in there. Now these, um, uh, these uh, text entry fields, they are set up, oops, they are set up to um, took too much there to adjust the size of the text to fit whatever you need. So if you're going to type a lot of text in there, it'll make the text smaller and smaller and smaller, and so you can fit it all. But it, there's going to be a point where it's going to get too small. And typically, you want to keep these things, uh, these areas, uh, just with the, the the pertinent information. You don't want to bombard it with a lot. We'll save that for a little bit later for each of the sections that we're going to be developing using the screens. So topic three is about the so that tie phrase. The definition, it connects the product features and benefits and the learning objective. You'll be able to correctly apply it to link the products and features. And then the last section is the customer interaction. Now this is not necessarily a topic, but more of a section of the e-learning. Now I'll um, I say, if you're not assessing your, your training, you're not training. Um, training is, if you don't assess it, you're basically just communicating. Uh, you're sending out flyers and marketing. That's all you're really doing. In order for something to be considered training, you have to deliver the content and assess whether it is successfully understood or comprehended or if the learning objectives are achieved. And so that's what this topic four is about. It's about assessing the, out, the learning outcomes. So it is a simulated customer interaction assessing module learning outcomes. So we'll put that in there just to make sure that everybody that is developing this is gonna know exactly what uh, we're doing here. The learning objective is, is during a simulated customer interaction, you'll be able to use the so that tie phrase to connect the Chelsea uh, collection features to its benefits five times. So there's gonna be five questions uh, that, are, that are gonna be used to take the features and benefits and connect them together with that, so that tie phrase. Now, if uh, so that we have this all set right here because we've already kind of done our analysis of what's gonna be necessary with e-learning, but if you're gonna use the storyboarding as the method of developing these, uh, these assessments and these topics, you're more than welcome to do so. Now, it's important to note that the uh, section four has, has a note here that says the assessment is mandatory for completion. So somebody that goes through all the other topics but doesn't finish the, the assessment, they're not gonna be marked as complete in this e-learning. So that is important to note on there. And we're going to, uh, let's put that into the definitions. There we go. So now we have it all noted. We can send that off to our, uh, to our uh, developer and now they know what is necessary for each section. And uh, now we're gonna get into the actual screens. What is gonna be each of the um, pages of the e-learning? And we'll do that by using the screen slide. 
And here we've got a section to click the to, to name what the screen is. And we're going to use a number a number um, naming convention, just 1.1, 1.2, 1.3. When we jump to a new section, 2.1, 2.2, 2.3, we may get in more incremental. Um, but at least that way we'll keep on track. And if anybody needs, hey, I've got a question about that part of the slide or that section, you can say, well, what slide are we actually talking about? And uh, it's more easy to exchange notes when you have things clearly delineated as a uh, as an individualized, mutually exclusive uh, numbering system. And then we're going to type in what is this screen about? What is the name thing? And this is going to be the introduction or splash screen. So when we open up our e-learning, we want somebody to be introduced with some kind of splash screen that says, "Hey, this is what you're doing." And in the, this um, storyboard, we've got in the screen, we have uh, multiple sections here, graphics and media and notes and comments. In OST stands for on-screen text. This is the text that is what is, uh, is typed on the screen that the learner will see. They will be able to read this. VO audio is what is stated. What is the verbal, the, 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 the narration of this? Or it could also be music or uh, Foley effects, sound effects, whatever it might be. You would put that all in there. Navigational info is what is the, the, how does the user navigate? What buttons do what? So you would write that information there. And then notes and comments are for just about anything else. You can have reviewers put information there, special production needs, um, put the file names uh, in there that are being used to create this page, whatever you like. Um, but so that's just a general section for notes and comments. But in this area right here, this is 16-9 aspect ratio, so it should represent your, um, your screen. And this is where we would build out our, um, uh, the look of this particular screen. And this could be done here in PowerPoint, or you could print it up. I mean, I got a printed version of it right here. So if I'm you know, sitting down and I'm out of the computer, I want to do some brainstorming at a cafe or out in a park, I could just uh, and start scratch, uh, scrabbling it all out on what I think it's going to look like, and then come back to PowerPoint and actually make it with the real images. So that's another nice feature of these storyboards. You can print them out blank, write them in, and as a, as a kind of a quick prototyping, brainstorming sort of design methodology, and then transfer it over with the graphics that are a little higher fidelity. And in this one, we're going to make a splash screen, as I mentioned. So what we're going to do is we're going to take a graphic. So uh, here are the graphics that were provided to you in the Dropbox file. And in there is a bunch of pictures of um, the Chelsea Dining Collection, as well as some icons that we may use later. Uh, as well as uh, the customer, Rachel here. She's gonna represent the customer interaction that we're gonna be doing. So one thing we do need to have in our, in our splash screen is um, an introduction to, to the Chelsea Dining Collection, maybe just a picture. We just wanna show, hey, this is what it is. So let's grab one of the pictures from the Chelsea Dining Collection. Let's do uh, dining room number one, and I'm gonna pop it down in here. And so I'm gonna just center it up in here. So it kind of fills the screen. Now, what you can do is also add guidelines so that you can guide the image into this box. And you do that by just right clicking, oops, right clicking on the screen, guides, uh, gu grids and guides, and you can add a vertical guide and a horizontal guide. Uh, in fact, we already have one right here. So I'm gonna put one right there. That's that guide right there. And there's one, there's a, that's a vertical, here's the horizontal. So I'll put one there. Now I wanna add some more. So we'll do another one, add a vertical guide, and let's add another horizontal guide. There we go. Bring that the vertical one over here and that horizontal one down here. So now things will snap to those guides. We can keep within that area very easy. It's going to be a problem if you're constantly having to adjust a little thing. So now we're going to be able to snap to these guides much easier. And then we want to, uh, for the splash screen, we want to show that this is the Devonshire Living um, uh, Training. So we want to put the Devonshire Living logo right in the center. And we have that right here, the Devonshire Living logo. Let's we'll pop that right in the middle. Center it in. If you have your guides on, it'll show you where the middle is with those red lines. And there you go. We got Devonshire Living with the Dining Collection. Only problem is it's a little hard to read that, that logo kind of blends into the background a little bit, not great. So let's do a little bit of image manipulation, make that clearer and easier to see. 
So we're going to click on the image. We're going to go over to um, transparency and we're going to make it a little more transparent so that it pops out. There we go. Now we can see it a little better. Perfect. On screen text here, not really going to have any on screen text. This is just a splash screen other than the Devonshire Living logo, but we do want to have voiceover. Um, now, voiceover, you may think, oh, what about subtitles? We need to have subtitles for those that, that, um, that, uh, that, that, that can't hear the voiceover. They don't have the audio capabilities on their computer or maybe they're deaf, whatever the case. I don't, <clears throat> I don't normally consider uh, subtitles for those requirements to be considered on-screen text. I consider that a sub, you know, a, 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 um, uh, it's a subtitle. It's, it's not something that, that was absolutely necessary to put as on-screen text. You can put that on later as an overlay to even on-screen text. So don't worry about that. In fact, what we write in here, the voiceover will be used to create those subtitles at a much later date if it ends up that you need to. Um, so let's, let's welcome the, uh, the user to this by just say, hey, welcome. Welcome to the Devonshire. Uh, living product training. That's it. And there we go. Real easy. Navigational info. Where do we want to have the, the do we want to have the user click on anything here? Or do we want them to have like a begin button or anything like that? For this particular screen, I'm going to say no. This is just an auto transition splash screen. So I'm just going to say none. Auto transition to next screen. There we go. So now the now whoever is developing this out knows that they have to get that image. They have to uh, put the logo in the mid middle, create the VO, uh, that VO voiceover, and have the transition just be an automatic. We're pretty much done with that one. We could put some more information down here about what exact pictures we're using, but ideally your developer would have access to the same pictures to be able to see it. So they may not be necessary. It really depends on um, your the the, the uh, asset uh, distribution of this between you and your developer. Um, it's, so you may want to write that information down. May not depends on what you, how you feel. We're not for the sake of time here. We're going to create another screen, and this one's going to be 1.2, and this one is now going to be called. We're going to call this topic introduction. So in this one, it's, it's kind of a secondary splash screen. We want to introduce people to the topics that they're going to be learning for today. And for this one, we want to kind of mirror what we did in the previous screen. So what we'll do is we'll take, copy the image that we already adjusted in there and paste it directly in. So we just basically got it right there. We don't have to find the image again. Um, and we want to have the Devonshire Living logo, but we don't want to put it right in the center again. Let's make it small and have it transition over to the upper left-hand corner, which we call a bug. Um, and that could appear in the rest of the slides there to let everybody know, hey, this is the Devonshire Living uh, Training. So at any slide, they'll know, hey, you're in the Devonshire Living Training. Not that it wouldn't be obvious, but it's a pretty common thing to do to have a, the logo of the company in the upper right or in a, one of the corners there. Now, in this section, let's go back. Uh, we're going to introduce all the topics that we're going to be uh, going over in the e-learning today. So we go to our uh, design document and just copy and paste on the on-screen text section each of the sections that we're going to be doing. So we'll copy in features and benefits. We'll copy in Chelsea Dining Collection. Oops, there we go. Copy in the so that tie phrase. And if any point, at any point anybody has any questions regarding um, anything that we're doing, this, we'd like to keep this. This is not, you know, the sage on the stage. If you have any questions, we can stop. We can answer them. Let me know. We can, we can uh, uh, definitely. I'll address ask a question. question for you, please, Kevin. Uh, okay. So uh, first of all, this is it's cool. Uh, free templates always gets me a, a, a five stars out of five stars, right, for you. Um, I'm going to pretend to sound like an instructional designer here, but I'm not, right? It feels like there's a lot of cognitive load here with the squares and the charts and the fill things in here, there. What do you feel like is the value of using this template versus just slapping things on a blank slide? You know, for example, I could have a generic forward and back button to show the navigational info and say, hey, I'm going to build this out later versus going into this formatted slide and saying, I will have a forward and backward button. What, what's kind of the value of this kind of template for you? 
It depends. It depends on the organization. For me, I like to make it. If I'm developing it all by myself, I would go with what you're saying. I would just do the whole slide as what I think it's going to look like. And um, because I know exactly where things are going to go when I put something down, I know what images are. So the, 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 that would be a great value that, that, that is fine. Now, if you're working in a large organization with maybe a developer vendor, um, you know, a lot of development work is being outsourced to India and they will frequently um, do whatever you specifically ask without question. It's almost kind of malicious compliance. And you, you want to be as clear as crystal with them in order to make sure that you don't waste any development time, have any rework. So that is the value of adding all this content in here is that you would eliminate that option of re that the possibility of rework you make as clear as possible and um uh, now it does slow up the process but it ensures ensure it just reduces the risk of having those errors occur now you can um you and you can redo this in any way shape form everybody's going to have their own style of developing a storyboard uh, in fact, the storyboard I showed you in the, for the video was very much more cut and dry. There wasn't all this detail in here, but then at the same time, that wasn't something that had a lot of oversight. Let's say you have a lot of oversight on this particular e-learning. You're developing, um, I developed some medical training before where there's a lot of people, the subject matter experts, stakeholders, the legal team. Uh, there's, uh, I think like some HIPAA compliance people that were involved in that, a bunch of people. And they want, it's almost like a legal document. So the more detail, typically the better. And um, I frequently say it's easier to melt an ice cube than it is to refreeze water. So if you have, have, <clears throat> have all the content right there, um, then you can, um, uh, then you can, you can make it simpler at a later time if necessary. Also, let's say you're going to be developing out all of these on-screen text using a very special um, um, uh, graphic creation program. Um, then you may need to have that as all easy to copy and paste information in one place, as opposed to jumping all over the place. Uh, so as you'll see, when we develop out the screen, this text is going to appear in several different places on the screen. And it could, you know, it'd be easier to say, hey, just give me a printout of the text I need to develop out my graphics or a, a printout of just the audio, the voiceover. So um, it, it segmenting like this makes it easier to um, kind of uh, um, make a product line or an assembly line um, to, set, to, to batch process some of your development. Um, you know, you don't want to do the voiceover for every single screen as you're developing it out. You kind of want to do all the voiceover at one time. And so having it all in one place, copy and paste it in another document, and just have the, the, the person read it out, that makes it a little easier sometimes. So it really depends on how you, how your, you and your organization want to work. Um, so this may be too much. Absolutely. I've seen some, I uh, actually have another storyboard I could show you that goes into much even more detail than this. Uh, that puts references in there of every single document that's talked about in here. Um, so at that level, it, it, it really depends on your organization. It's also a matter of just being professional. And uh, the reason behind that is your first or second idea is not necessarily the best idea. Mm -hmm. If you storyboard it, you've thought through the entire thing once. And the next time you look at it, you are free to be a little bit more creative, a little bit more innovative as you go through this. So this is just one iteration of several iterations that leads to a much better product. Both very good answers. I'll have to take your class. I also want to point one other uh, helpful feature to storyboarding like this is that when we create something that looks really nice and beautiful as a prototype or, or whatever, we get married to that sometimes. And it may blind us to some features that are not going to work with the, with the learner. So when you make things a little bit more... Um, uh, 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 sterile like this, where where it's it's much more clear cut and dry. You kind of look at it from more of the learner's perspective and from the topics and the content perspective instead of getting married to that really cool looking graphic or that really cool interaction or the this just that that thing you fall in love with and you don't you can't do without. 
you know, in, in just like writing, you have to kill your darlings sometimes. And so this is a way to kind of make it easier to kill your darlings. Now, Kevin, um, this is Bridget. I know that we're almost coming up to the end of the time, but I know um, I'm my, I had an experience similar to like Sarah's where, you know, was given a project to execute on quickly and had rise to use. Right. And I kind of started doing the same. I did do some storyboarding. I forget what, what I was asked to put it in. If it was just, I think I had the liberty to even put it in a word document. Right, just kind mm -hmm. of to put something down somewhere for someone to check out. But then I just really started working in Rise and going from there. And I'm just kind of my question is, could you give an example of maybe, you know, something that was successful and something that wasn't so successful using that platform? I don't know if you have experience, but also of because um, I'm wondering if maybe like this, obviously it's useful and it's a tool of our industry, but is this maybe more advantageous when you have voiceover and other kind of multi-layering versus maybe just like a flat course on a, in an LMS or a, um, uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. The, yeah, the tool you use should, um, should be adapted or should be useful for the end product. So uh, not all tools are created equal. Not all tools should be used for every application. So if you are doing something with less interactions, it's more just a slide deck in an e-learning format, you may not need this level. Um, but if you are doing something much more advanced where uh, you need to, to show all these interactions taking place, then you would use a, more, a, a higher fidelity tool. Um, but I don't know, uh, John, you, you have more experience with Articulate and Rise and those things. How do you feel about some of the um, features in there for storyboarding? Uh, well, again, if I'm doing this all by myself and it's a simple uh, project, I'll, I'll just sit down and do it because uh, it's, uh, that doesn't make any sense. But if anybody else gets involved or for a more involved presentation a, a storyboard is just such a important step because if as i said earlier it's never going to be cheaper or easier to change something and then if you do get into something with your client or a SME down the uh, road and they have changed their mind you can go back to the storyboard and say but you signed off on this and if we change it in the development that's going to take more time more more money and uh, you really needed to uh, pay attention to this earlier now uh, kevin we're sliding into the last five yeah. minutes here and i want to give people uh, time to uh, write into the chat what they would like to see going forward so if you could uh, wrap it up for us please yeah, certainly. Um, and I, so I was just putting together a couple of what the interactions might look like or what some of the slides might look like. And I'm just using some copy and paste of, of PowerPoint to kind of create our buttons um, uh, in this. And uh, if you like, I can show you really briefly because I've actually developed this particular module out. Um, and let's see, where did I put it? Here we go. Uh, so you can kind of see what it ends up looking like. Storyboard. Uh, uh, in the final e-learning. And this is gonna might even segue into our next, um, our next uh, 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 SIG is how to use PowerPoint for e-learning prototyping and even development. And so here is kind of how the e-learning uh, developed out in PowerPoint um, and with all the different sections and what we're gonna be covering on each. And these are interactive. This actually does work. In fact, if I present, you'll see that these some of these features they actually the function. See that it has exceptional strength. And so I can go to the main menu and and you know go to our Chelsea Dining. Oh, actually, we just did that, but yeah, Chelsea Dining Collection. The newest set from so Devonshire this, Living. Can the Chelsea Dining Collection and includes side chairs, it into a bench, functional and a table capable of seating six guests. guests. In PowerPoint, without Click even the buttons having to, go to, to learn more about the features and, so and benefits kind of, where of the Chelsea Dining Collection. So that's where develop and hopefully get people to ease in to using a more higher grade tool um, with by by utilizing all the features of PowerPoint um, to create these things because there is limits to what PowerPoint can do that Articulate takes over on. Uh, uh, John, put my email in chat. So if you have um, questions or uh, concerns or anything you want to follow up, please email me or find me on LinkedIn. I always love talking shop, um, especially at the ATD mixers. If you want to join uh, one of those, I, I try to appear at those often and uh, we can chat away. And I typically have my computer on me. So if you want to find out more about how to use your skills, I can crack it out and show you. Yeah, this is our opportunity to uh, talk shop. And uh, I believe uh, the 
we're going on alternate weeks with the SIG. Is that correct, Kevin? So we're uh, al alternate months for, right, for at least mine. Yeah. Oh, did, did I say weeks? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. yeah the next months. one um, is May, I believe. May. Okay. First week in May, then. Mm -hmm. We're going the first, uh, what is this, Wednesday, first Wednesday in alternate months. Okay. Well, thank you all for attending.